I would be moving on to the next speaker, that is uh, in any case myself, and uh, I would be more talking about uh, some of the aspects of the vaccine, especially the COVID vaccine, and uh, in particular, what's been the Pakistan's uh, uh, perspective. Uh, my uh, presentation is just being loaded, but as we move on, uh, we start off with some of the things that were discussed a bit earlier uh, about uh, the labs and diagnostic. and just want to share the, that we started off 300 tests per day at NIH uh, one, uh, for COVID, PCR, and uh, we rapidly gained the strength all across the country, initially including two uh, Institute from the private sector, Shaukat Khanam and Aga Khan, but later on moving all across the country. Now we have almost more than 200 functional lab and we are trying to provide the quality assured uh, results uh, uh, to the masses. Uh, we have had restrictions over the antigen testing uh, for very obvious reasons and it is still limited to quite an extent. And for the first time when I started off with genomics, uh, COVID alone, and now we are moving all uh, across uh, for the straining we have the capability and capacity to de detect all of them and we have now with us Brazil, uh, I mean the third way is directly dedicated to the UK strain and uh, otherwise we do have Brazil and South African strain. Uh, next slide please. Now, uh, almost every century we get a pan pandemic. Uh, as time is short, so I'll be hurriedly going through uh, and uh, we've been talking of uh, eventualities uh, for quite some time and finally we are into it and still it is not over, it may take some time. Next slide please. Uh, if you see this slide, uh, I mean, on 31st December as we moved on, the detection in China, the whole genome sequencing announcement and moving on to 11th March where WHO declared uh, COVID as a pandemic uh, with more than 100,000 ca uh, uh, cases uh, all across the globe. Next slide please. Uh, I mean, if you see this slide, I mean, uh, at the national level, we have a very formidable monitoring system under the National Command and Operations Center, where all the stakeholders have been provided the platform to sit together and uh, strategize it together. And I think this is one of the hallmarks and successes uh, which has been attained for a developing country like Pakistan. And if you see the mitigation measures and their effects directly correlating. Uh, once we start strict implementation. Next slide, please. The national response definitely has been very much centralized and monitoring all the peripheral regions of the body, including uh, the regions and uh, the provinces, with the strategies, especially the smart lockdown strategy played very well. Next slide, please. Now, uh, in particular, talking about uh, the vaccine, there are different types as already highlighted by Nancy. So I would not uh, waste much of the time on these technologies. Next slide, please. A little bit about the component. That's also equally important because we have been facing certain issues uh, with uh, the ingredients inside uh, the vaccine as in, and also potentiating the effect of vaccine is also under consideration. And that include the adjuvants, uh, the other things, and uh, so on. I would not like to bother you with the technicalities. Next slide, please. Now, uh, we, uh, most of the people uh, sitting over here being doctors, they are already well versed. If there's a direct infection, how do we get the antibody? And then, then there's a T cell mediated response in the body. And similarly, if you inject the vaccine, they start uh, again with the production of antibodies. And uh, to quite an extent, uh, T cell response uh, has been uh, equally good uh, as far as COVID is concerned. Next slide, please. Um, if you see the cumulative number of vaccine developed since uh, 1798, it's a huge number. When they started from the kill to plasma drive, the recombinant technology, the purified proteins, the conjugate proteins, and so on. Next slide, please. Now, this is a very important slide. Uh, I mean, if you see 85% of the population uh, living in the developing world with an infectious disease burden of 93% and production of only 18% vaccine. So this is quite a disturbing fact. And I think this is the key consideration while we talk in particular in sense of uh, COVID vaccination. And uh, as you already understand, uh, that 90% of the vaccine uh, has already been booked by the developed countries uh, for COVID. Next slide, please. In talking definitely uh, with the perspective, once uh, uh, the purchases are concerned, 
I think price is also a big reason and concern for the developing countries. Uh, well, there are fixed costs attached to it. There are semi-fixed costs, including the R&D, which definitely in itself is very, very costly. And then there are variable, variable costs uh, uh, for different ingredients and utilities uh, beside the vaccine in itself. Next slide, please. Uh, if we see, I mean, um, for any vaccine, the, the definitely there is a pharmaceutical quality, in the small scale study, then following the in vitro and in vivo animal studies, moving on to the clinical trial, phase one, two, and three, and then moving on to uh, uh, final evaluation and decision till the time it goes into manufacturing. And then start the phase four once it is launched with the phase of pharmacovigilance as we are now uh, facing this challenge of so many vaccines in the market now. Next slide, please. Uh, Nancy already highlighted, I mean, the DNA vaccine for COVID, RNA vaccine, and top of line is the messenger RNA, and we have learned a lot about uh, uh, Moderna, Pfizer, and others now coming in like CureVac. Then the protein, I think uh, the perfume protein is going to be the next uh, market capturing whereby so many large companies investing uh, for COVID alone in this area. And then we have the viral vector vaccine, quite famous, the AstraZeneca, the Sputnik, CanSino, and other basically adenoviral vector based vaccine. The vector has been changed uh, by the different companies. Uh, just to, for an example, the AstraZeneca utilizing the Japan, chimpanzee adenoviral vector, the Russian utilizing two different strains are there. I think that paid them a lot. And then we are going in a phase where there's a cleaning of uh, uh, different uh, vaccine as well. Um, and then uh, definitely we have the others uh, like uh, CoronaVac and uh, uh, Sinopharm, the live attenuated vaccines, uh, and they're mostly from China. Next slide, please. Now, sometime back, I mean, right now there's much, much more 300 molecules, so many under study, so many under clinical trial phases. But I think um, uh, we are in the final phase. Uh, uh, so many have already been launched. Next slide, please. Uh, the topmost I, I would say, I mean, um, right now we have seen the comparison uh, Modern and Pfizer, and uh, the problem with the developing countries again is the cold chain maintenance, and I think that would be over once we have the cure back because the same technology but utilizing the refrigerated techniques rather than the minus 20 to minus 80 degree Celsius requirements. And uh, uh, we see AstraZeneca, uh, it was supposed to capture the maximum market with so much of bulk production all across the globe. And COVAX was also dependent upon this, but uh, due to certain limitations, uh, still it is a, in not that rapid gear. Uh, Sinopharm has picked up very well, it's been recognized by WHO now recently, and uh, it has two varieties, uh, with the one having 83 and the other one variety having 79% efficacy. Uh, as I already said, Sputnik from the Malaya Institute uh, claiming more than 90% uh, efficacy. I think Tom is going to tell about all these vaccines once we are into phase four. And now Johnson & Johnson rapidly picking up gear uh, with, with, with a single dose. I think single dose is something very, very important, especially for the elderly and uh, people living in the far-flung areas. So they're going to capture the market just like Ken Sino and Johnson & Johnson. They are moving in the same direction. Uh, next slide, please. Already uh, told about this, uh, well, um, uh, at NIH, uh, we have been coordinating the clinical trials. A uh, little bit I'll uh, tell you later. Next slide, please. Uh, the concerns, I mean, definitely, I mean, um, um, no one is safe until everyone is safe, and that's the methodology to be adopted globally. This is very, very challenging, very alarming, very important, and to be considered. And based upon that, the COVAX window was uh, created. Pakistan with a population of two, uh, 20 million, uh, that's a huge burden. And we need an herd immunity between 70 to 80 percent, as for the other countries. And uh, uh, vaccine plan to be imported, likely not be able to cover required proportion of the population at least in 2021. This stands true for most of the developing countries. Next slide, please. Uh, we prepared a very formidable policy at the national level. Uh, it was uh, prepared involving all the stakeholders. So there are different committees at different levels. Uh, for the first time, a national immunization management system was straight away devised. 
which is in uh, collaboration with uh, uh, Nadra, which look after uh, our national ID cards and uh, has the management system over there. So everyone getting the vaccine is endorsed and getting the certificate through Nadra. Uh, this has never happened in the past. So as I said, challenges provide you the opportunities. It's our duty uh, to uh, pick up those challenges and convert them into opportunities. Um, we have centers that uh, establish all across the country. There are walk-in centers as well. The procurement and planning, I think, um, again, uh, has been exquisite. I mean, and previously, the Ministry of National Health Services were looking after. Now, the procurement has been recently given to National Disaster Management Authority uh, for procuring these vaccines available globally. Uh, we have a formidable communication strategy, and then we are mo monitoring into phase, entering phase four. Uh, once uh, for the problem of vigilance. Next slide, please. Uh, we have bilateral contracts now. Uh, we, uh, for the COVAX window, 20% of the population coverage would be provided to us, and uh, we are welcoming the private sector into it. Uh, talk about this, and I think time is important because I think the rapidity of vaccination is equally important uh, because it may take some time. But I think developing the herd immunity as early as possible uh, with so many variants coming across and uh, sometimes it's a good news, sometimes it's a bad news about the variants of efficacy against the uh, But till today, I think overall uh, vaccine, uh, uh, vaccine efficacy against the variant is uh, comfortable. Next slide, please. Uh, we have had engagement uh, with Sinopharm much earlier. Our team also joined the trial in UAE and we started off uh, uh, the procurement and started with healthcare workers. Next slide, please. I, I think this is a success story for uh, the country. We started the first ever phase three uh, clinical trial. It has never happened in the past. And uh, with a mass population size of, uh, sample size of 70,500, uh, I am the, being the principal investigator to a very tough under these challenging uh, conditions. And we had an overall efficacy of 75%. Globally, it was 66% equivalent to Johnson and Johnson. Well, it's a very cost-effective single dose, and we laid down the transfer of technology uh, with it. And uh, Alhamdulillah, this uh, TOT has been done. And uh, yesterday, we announced the first batch of uh, CanSino vaccine uh, prepared in uh, at National Institute of Health uh, is being handed over to the government uh, during this week. So this is Alhamdulillah. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, really I used to say challenge with the and I could not imagine myself once I picked up this challenge that uh, it could be that tough. I, I knew it could be tough, but how much tough or not? I mean that much tough I could have never imagined till, till I landed. We landed up in. So all credit goes to my team who have been working day and night even during the eight, nine uh, eight holidays. And Alhamdulillah, uh, we are ready ready with the 124,000 doses. And the next challenge will be one million, and next million next month we will be landing in three million production at National Institute of Health in a very new GMP qualified ISO certified plant. Uh, next slide please. We have engagements, we are procuring to Sinov uh, Sinovac as well. These are the Chinese uh, vaccine, now moving on to the other side. Next year, uh, month we would be getting Pfizer, we have uh, signed a contract and we would be moving on to uh, purchases of so Pfizer and uh, it's, the matter was it previously it was not available and then we definitely have had certain whole uh, chain management issues which have been resolved. Uh, we would be going for Sputnik and AstraZeneca. Uh, we have received 1.2 million doses of AstraZeneca through COVAX and a similar number we would are expecting um, uh, next month as well. Next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, the timeline for delivery. I would not like to bother. Just to show you that the government is very much concerned and, and uh, we would make sure that we provide this vaccination to each and every citizen. And for the first time, we next slide, we, we started off with the mobile vaccination for elderly at home and another life started at the federal level and we have been again very successful because it's a real challenge in people with 70 to 80 years of bedridden would not have been able to come out to the hospital. So we provide it. Next slide, please. Uh, just to give you a glimpse, uh, this is the new GMP manufacturing facility within NIH, which has been recently adopted. Next slide. As you can see, it is compatible to any international standards. Next slide, please. 
So just to conclude, I would not like to take much of your time beyond this, that the situation in the country is well managed due to the dedicated effort of all the stakeholders. And this includes the government, the public, private, NGOs, academia, everyone has been involved. And those who think that they can uh, collaborate and cooperate further, definitely they are more than welcome anytime. Uh, this press form definitely was provided by the National Command and Operations Center. Um, well, I would say vaccination and social distancing still are the key uh, two important things that we need to follow up. Uh, and uh, our target is indi indi indigenous development of the vaccine. Uh, definitely going down right now, we are going to the stage two of TOT, uh, but moving on to stage uh, three, whereby we prepare the concentrate and inshallah that time we foresee in the near future and the R&D uh, because we just have an approval of a state-of-the-art R&D center uh, within NIH and I'm quite sure down the line two to three years we would come up uh, compatible to the international standard. Um, I think it's the, basically the balance has to be maintained between the prevention of uh, morbidity and mortality and preservation of the social, uh, societal and other functioning. Uh, that balance is to, maintain, to be maintained none, none other than you, than myself and all others. Thank you so much. Uh, so, um, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, at the end of the day, as Zabta is uh, uh, signaling me, uh, um, any questions please do send uh, back to us. Or we, we are there to answer. And uh, once again, I'm extremely grateful to the organizer for making this uh, happen. Uh, equally uh, indebted to all uh, the speakers. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Farooq, uh, uh, Nancy, and Dr. Bhutta uh, for your kind availability. And uh, I'm sure there will be lessons learned out of uh, this session as well, uh, looking towards uh, the Pakistan Academy of Sciences uh, to give it a formidable shape and uh, getting back to us. And we are there. We are the humble servants of the soil. We are there to perform and inshallah we will make sure that we keep contributing to our country and to, to the global efforts as well. Thank you so much.